everyone! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Yadi and this is Yadi Angel Art. So today we are going to talk about hands. I'm going to share with you guys my process with how I draw hands and then we're going to dive into some tips for some realistic painting digitally with hands as kind of the main feature. So let's get started! So before I get into the specific speed paint, I wanted to share with you guys some of my basic tips that I think about when I'm looking at hand references to do or when I'm just trying to consider like the hand pose that I'm trying to recreate. For me, when I draw hands, it's kind of different based on the pose that I'm trying to recreate. The first thing I try to think about for most hands is kind of the flow of the hand. And this is really useful when you kind of, when you're doing like more semi-open hands. Try and think about where the direction of the hand is going, similar to the flow of the body when you're trying to recreate a character. Another basic thing that I try to consider is the basic shape of the hand. So what shapes make up the hand that you're recreating? Try and break it up into as many little parts as possible. And there's this really cool activity that could help you improve that skill of breaking up shapes. Basically, Google a photograph of anything at all. It could be like a hand, it could be a, a person or an animal or a plant. Just Google any photograph and put that onto your drawing program or maybe print it out if you're doing this traditionally and just break up the shapes that make that photograph. So just draw over it any shapes you see, squares, circles, triangles, rectangles, anything at all. And that kind of helps to train your eye to look for those shapes. Finally, a sort of sub tip I have left is to also consider the silhouette of the hand that you're doing. So uh, instead of breaking it up into a ton of small shapes, first try to break it up into the large shape. Sometimes if it's a hand like this, you can even try and do like a, like a, what's it called? Not a, it's like an oven mitt, but the glove. Like a mitten. <laughs> You could do the shape of a mitten, and that'll help you break down the parts that make up the hand. Okay, so those are my basic tips to think about as you go in, but I'm also going to show you a bit of a speed paint to show you just how I tackle different poses. So let's switch gears a little bit and transfer over to digital. Something that I didn't mention before was, and this is a really good tip for both drawing hands and painting realistically, and that is don't be afraid of messy sketches. Start messy and then you can slowly build up from there. I used to always think that to be a good artist I had to be able to put something down that was perfect right away immediately. And some people can definitely do that, but for me and for a lot of the other artists I've seen, it really works best to do a really messy sketch and then break it down to the details later on. Do I trace hands? I have taken photos of my own hand before and traced that, never any hands from somewhere else. But I always did that as the last, last resort. Like I drew the hands like five times and I'm trying to meet a deadline and it just, I run out of time. For the most part, I very much try to avoid tracing at all costs, unless it's maybe for a study, but even then I don't like doing tracing myself. I don't see any problems with it, especially for studies, but also if you trace a part of something that you've seen and then you completely throw in a ton of your own elements and changes to the point where it's completely unrecognizable as the first thing you trace. But for me, I have just never found tracing to be useful. It's been a really good thing to do to get something done quickly when I'm short on time, but whenever I do tracing, it just doesn't feel like I've learned from it. It just kind of feels like I got my answers and I didn't get to learn how I got my answers, you know? I'd much prefer to draw it by eye. What that can do is really help improve your observational skills 
Now, this might not apply to you, and it certainly doesn't apply to everyone, and I'm not saying that people who trace are bad or anything. These are just my thoughts based on my own personal experiences. Okay, so as far as my thinking behind this week's speed paint, there was none. <laughs> Usually I have like a really good idea of what I'm doing when I go in and paint, but for some reason, I just kind of winged it this week. I knew I needed it to be hands related. Like I really wanted this to be the theme of the whole thing. So I knew that I was going to try and like emphasize hands in this painting, but I wasn't quite sure how I would do that. Like whether I would go realistic or my style. So I looked up a reference and actually this piece is more of a conglomerate of two references and I will share the links down below. But I found a model with her hands around her face and I decided that's what I wanted to do. And I started like sketching it and as I was moving along, I just started rendering it more and more and more until it just became like a completely realistic looking piece. <laughs> Definitely not my usual style. I have done this a few times before for class and that's, uh, those are old pictures that are even still up on my Instagram, but I definitely don't do this a lot. Okay, so I'm going to get into some tips for getting started with realistic painting. Now, most of these tips you can apply traditionally, but there are a few tips that are just for digital painting. I'm going to bring back that last tip I gave because it is so important. Don't be afraid to start messy. Build up the details later on. If you start on a blank page building up details right away, it's gonna come out a little wonky and you might not even notice until much later. And then it's kind of like, well, I just spent like an hour on this, so I guess it's just gonna be wonky. <laughs> now, I would also recommend, especially if you're just starting to get into realistic painting, to start your studies as black and white. Using color and color theory is really complicated and it's kind of a whole other beast on its own to tackle. Definitely not saying that it's impossible to learn, but if you're trying to learn how to render something and work with so many little details if you haven't done something like that before, it really helps to save coloring for a different study. Start with black and white, <laughs> it'll save you some time in the long run. While we're on the subject of black and white, I would also recommend that you start with either a mid-tone gray page or a black page. I don't have any scientific reasoning behind this, but I have noticed that it's a lot harder for me to paint realistically uh, starting on a white canvas than a darker canvas. What the process would be for you is that you would start on a darker canvas and then bring out the whites and the highlights. For this next tip, it gets a little bit technical. It's just for anyone out there wondering how I got this painting to look the way it did. I just wanted to let you know what I used. So I did this on Procreate. I generally do most of my digital paintings on Procreate. Now I started with a sketch layer on Multiply and I lowered the opacity of that layer down really low and I did the whole mid-tone gray and I painted on that. For most of the painting, I used a soft brush. Nothing special, nothing extra that I bought. It's the generic softest brush that came with Procreate. I might have also used like their generic harder brush just to bring out some of the darker shadows, but for like 99% of it, I really just used that one brush. I was actually pretty impressed with it because I have done realistic painting on Photoshop before and I've had to juggle maybe like three or four brushes to the point where I made a separate layer and I noted which brushes I used. So when I'd come back and keep working on it, I know where I left off and what I was using, but I was really happy to see that I just really needed that one brush and it was perfect. Now, if you're someone who maybe doesn't have a lot of pressure sensitivity for whatever tablet you might be using, then opacity would be your best friend. 
Uh, if anyone doesn't know, opacity is basically just changing how well you can see the brush. But you'll want to change the opacity to blend things properly. Another thing that's really worked for me and really works for just a blending technique is to do everything in one layer. Now this is something that goes pretty much completely against all of my personal work habits. I love layers. At the end of every illustration I make, I have like 50 layers, a layer for everything. <laughs> uh, I just can't resist. But for realistic painting, you're gonna want mainly one layer, maybe two or three, depending on what you wanna do with the background. It just helps with blending a lot better. Finally, you'll want to be gentle and gradual with building up those details. You'll want to zoom in really close and blend the colors as softly as possible. And don't forget to pause and zoom back out and see how it's going. Sometimes you can get really lost in those details and not even realize that you're doing great. It, it's looking like what you meant it to look like and you might want to take a break or stop it. Whenever I do this on Photoshop, I love pulling up the little thumbnail window so that you can have that on the side and just always know what your painting is looking like no matter how zoomed in you are. If anyone knows whether that exists on Procreate, let me know in the comments below. I would love to know if Procreate does that too. So that's all I have for you guys today. Here's the finished piece. Let me know what you guys think. This is not my common style or type of video so if you liked it please don't forget to give me a thumbs up and to hit subscribe and i will see you guys next week